values in teaching, and teaching values. And we'll discuss three different models of value-based education, the different ways in which a teacher brings values into the classroom, and a few examples from both the United States and Australia. So let's th first think about the history of public schools in the United States and how values have been a part of the educational system since we had a public schooling system. So in the, 19, in the 1770s through the 1800s, we started to develop the first public schools in America. And the idea here is that we needed to help create a way of bringing people from different backgrounds together to intermingle and also to create a bond around this new idea of demography that was coming into shape in the United States. And here we can see that the first notions of schooling, the idea of bringing everyone together for free access to schooling, was underpinned by this value of being integrated, of having people with different experiences and different identities understanding one another, but also aiming towards teaching a value of democracy, the value of this new cultural and social identity that was emerging in America. Then in the 1990s, in the 1900s, sorry, there was an influx of many immigrants into the United States and a lot of movement. And there was a need for an idea of teaching particular values to help preserve a particular way of life that was developing in America that was rooted in democracy, but also to help make sure that particular values were being preserved in order to help advance society. So public school systems, schools, started to explicitly teach values like freedom and family responsibility and equality to their students. Then, in the 1950s and 1960s, there was a move for schools to start teaching towards more social unity. This was the idea of teaching values that were aimed at addressing the social needs of a society instead of focusing on individual values or individual needs. This was necessary be in response to the ending of World War II, where there was a concern about the types of people and cultures that we were developing that would have allowed people like Hitler to exist and to allow people to form communities to support the Nazis and to allow people to not actively resist the Nazis' infiltration into their society. So there is this, this overarching force, both in America and worldwide, that we needed to teach particular values to help prevent the travesties of World War II from happening again. And this was aimed by developing the sense of social obligation to help preserve society and to help make sure that we don't do the evils that have been done in the past. If you're interested in learning more about this type of educational movement in the 1950s and 1960s, I have attached an additional reading in today's lecture by Adorno called Education After Oxford. This explains how we must teach in order to avoid and prevent the horrors of Auschwitz from happening again. So then we move into the 1980s, where there's a heavy focus on the need for skill development. And values began to be taught through the idea of developing particular skills. This is namely the critical, skill, critical thinking skill movement. So values became less focused on morality and ethics and social unity and a sense of social identity I, aka being part of democracy, instead became focused on the individual skill development and the idea of becoming prepared for colleges and careers. In this sense, there was a shift away from a teaching explicit values, and instead values were hidden within the idea of reason and critical thinking. That is, what is valuable is the development of particular skills, like critical thinking, creativity, which well, may not sound like particular values like freedom or fairness, but are in themselves another type of value. That is, that we value people who can think well, or we value the ability to think outside the box. In the 1990s, 
there is a movement towards teaching in a more globalized and technologically advancing world. So with the idea of us becoming more interconnected through technology, there is a need to teaching values that would help promote students in navigating this increasingly globalized sphere that we all find ourselves in. So there was a focus on multiculturalism education, the idea of being able to talk and relate across differences through empathy and understanding, but it also meant continuing the ideas of particular skill development. Those are the skills that would help us to be competitive worldwide, but also to help individuals be successful in their careers and to integrate and work with others in other countries. This then folded into the 2000s, where education began to focus more on the idea of teaching for engaged citizenship. Here, the explicit teaching of morality-based values that were existing in the 1900s come into fold again. And many say this is because there was a general sense in the 2000s that due to the globalized nature of the world and the advancement of technology, that we had forgotten what it meant to be part of community and forgot and did not emphasize the sense of duty or obligation to those in our community. In this sense, there is a, a push to teaching children again about the values of responsibility and collaboration so that they could maintain a particular group identity and also be able to engage with others throughout the world. In this sense, is no, not so much focused on the individual, but again focused on the idea of social unity. That is, we're teaching students to become engaged in their communities so that they can help their communities advance and become better. In this sense, we're bringing ideas back from the 1950s and 60s. Can you think about how your experiences in your K-12 education system promoted particular values? look at three different models of value-based education. As we discuss these different models, please note that there are many other models, such as religious models of education. Today, I'm simply focusing on the public school models of education that currently exist today. This is not meant to be an exhaustive, exhaustive model. So there are three different general models of value-based education. One is character education, where the focus is developing a particular student's character by emphasizing the need for people to be, to have integrity, to be responsible, to be respectful, but also to be leaders and to be creative. This idea of teaching values through education aims to be a little less controversial because it tries to frame values as being a universal value that all people will agree on, like everyone wants to have good character, and that these values are neutral in a sense that almost anyone f would find them good, and that no one would have an issue with their child or student learning to develop these characteristics. Character education also tries to aim at teaching values that they see will remain throughout time. That is, these values aren't going to change in their importance and necessity as we progress, that there are core aspects of what it means to be a good person, to have a good character, and that these character traits should be supported and developed within the educational system. So this means that there might not be explicit teaching of character traits, but instead the idea of character is embedded within the different subjects. So when talking about a book, a teacher may raise questions about the different the different people's character. That is like, are they good people? Are they bad people? Is this person showing integrity? It might also mean that in the classroom, the teacher has created particular expectations for how students engage with their work and with one another. That is that, you know, you're a good partner, that you clean up your space because you're respectful to the community. And this Character-based education often also takes the form of school policies. So you can think about the rules 
that might exist within the school that would encourage students to be, have integrity, such as the honor code, or to ensure that schools, that students take responsibility for their actions, so expectations around punishment and discipline. But we can also think about those mission statements or ideas or rules or values that are posted throughout the school, such as a good person is blank, or this school values integrity, honesty, perseverance. These are appeals to character-based value education. The second model is moral development education, where there's an explicit focus on developing ethical values. These are the values about what makes something right or wrong, but also about what makes someone a good person. In moral development here, there's an attempt to create, you know, another non-controversial focus on values by focusing on those values that we think make for good people and help develop strong communities. However, it is important to notice that this ethical focus on values may differ based on the cultural backgrounds of the students, the society in which you are teaching, and the general time period. That is, we can think about the value of honor and how it might look different in a particular society, a different culture, or in a different time. In this sense, moral development and value-based education is very con must rely on the particular context in which the teacher is teaching. The general goal here is not to develop a student's character, but instead to develop a particular understanding of the different values that make for a good person and a good society. In this case, there may be more explicit activities in curriculum integration of values. That is, by focusing on developing an understanding of justice and being able to act in a just way, a teacher might create activities that ask students to reflect on different situations where justice may happen or need to be applied and ask students to discuss this or to reflect on whether or not the character was being just or fair. It also means that there may be activities that place students in situations where they have to reason through what is the right thing to do, in which case they will apply the values of equality or honor or responsibility. Because moral development education is really about developing thinking skills and then applying those skills in practice, moral development education often takes the form of discussions and group activities, where there is a goal, which is to help students understand a basic ethical concept, but also for them to understand it well enough that they can apply it in their own lives. And this is a case in which students are asked to problem solve through an ethical dilemma, and the teacher guides them in the right direction in order to develop particular moral values. The third model is a model that we've learned about in our previous lectures, which is the idea of critical pedagogy. This is a very explicit values-based education that is very narrow in its aim. That is, critical pedagogy, as we've learned before, is focused on creating a more just future, to waking up students to the, the oppressions and power dynamics of their, their lives to help them understand what is happening so that it can be empowered to change their communities and to get out of the oppressive cycle that they are in or to prevent from, from being participants in the oppression of others. In this case, value-based education, that's critical pedagogy, focuses on helping students develop an awareness of what power dynamics are at play for them and in a larger society what the social justice movement is and what social justice is, as well as focusing on the individual realities of, their, of the students and helping them problem solve how they can break out of the cycles of oppression that they may be in. This means that critical pedagogy takes a very explicit focus on values-based education, but remember it's narrowly focused. It's not all the things that make you a good person, such as character education. There's not all the ethical values that help you decide what is the right thing to do, like moral development, but instead critical pedagogy is focused mainly on social justice issues. And this is done by picking particular lessons 
and curriculum subjects to teach, to engage students in learning in a particular way where the teacher is seen as a guide to help wake the students up to their realities and to push them into questioning and challenging the power dynamic. But it also means that the school and classroom needs to be structured so that the teacher becomes student and the student becomes teacher. In many cases, critical pedagogy is seen as a radical pedagogy because it is so explicit in its value focus and it does not aim to be neutral. It is very upfront with trying to confront a particular issue through a particular value lens. What model do you think is the best way of approaching values-based education, if you had to pick one, and why? You'll be asked to develop your ideas in the lecture quiz. Now let's look at the three or four different ways in which values can be infused within the schooling system. These four models are explained in our reading, Values in Teaching and Teaching Values, the selected excerpt. So one way in which values enter the school and enter the classroom is by how the teacher chooses to focus on a particular aspect of the curriculum. That is, most teachers are required to teach a particular topic, but then the teacher has freedom to choose how they focus on that topic. And that choice in how they focus can reflect particular values that that teacher has. Similarly, a teacher may be able to create their own goals or personal objectives in addition to the required goals or objectives that are prescribed by the state curriculum, the national curriculum, or the school's policies. In, per in selecting particular objectives for their students, for aiming towards development of particular skills, for developing particular understandings about topics, teachers also infuse their values within the school and then therefore on their students. So we can see that a teacher focus of the curriculum and objectives can be one way of indoctrinating students. So if we look at the reading more closely, there are a few examples of how this is possible. It might be possible that in talking about the issue of the environment, the teacher chooses to focus on a particular issue of air pollution, and in doing so, may assign particular reasons that suggest that air pollution is human created, is problematic, and what industries are doing to hurt and continue to allow air pollution to get worse, and what policies need to be in place to prevent air pollution. In this case, the teacher is focusing on a particular aspect of the environment that they have to teach air pollution and is focusing on developing the idea that air pollution is bad and human created and therefore needs to be addressed. A developing a particular value within their students, that is the value of valuing the environment, but the, also the value of personal responsibility and the value of caring for nature. In a similar situation, a teacher may choose to focus on, within this curriculum, the development of particular skills. So maybe they want to focus on the development of critical thinking skills and problem-based skills, and therefore ask students to engage in activities that have them use these skills. In this way, the, student is focus the teacher is focusing on developing a particular value, right? The idea of being able to think reasonably. So they're valuing reason and, pro and problem solving. Another teacher who may be assigned the same curriculum may instead focus on developing students' ability to collaborate and discuss with another, one another. In this case, they're focusing on social-emotional learning and therefore promoting particular values about what it means to be part of a community, about how to cooperate with one another. When talking about objectives around comprehension, we can also see that the, val the values of the teacher and what they choose to focus on can be a form of indoctrinating students. That is, if I'm a teacher and I'm focusing on objectives that are about understanding simply what the text is saying and being able to tell me what that is by telling me the truth 
and what you know, I'm valuing a particular type of knowledge, and therefore saying what is valuable is to be well versed. But I might also be a teacher that in trying to test for understanding that I focus on how you make connections between what you've read and your own life, in which case I'm promoting a particular type of value of personal connection, of how what we know can inform how we live, in which case I'm promoting a particular value that is focused on the individual and about relevancy. Another way of values sneak their way into education is through these subjects themselves. So it might be the case that there are some subjects that lend themselves to teaching particular values. We can think of what types of values tend to be ingrained in English classes versus science classes versus math classes, right? Where science and math seem to be subjects that promote this idea of particular notions of truth and therefore promote values around this idea of, of objective truth. Where the subjects like the humanities, history, and, math and English may promote different types of values just because of the nature of how we treat them. In which case, we can think of English and history as developing different notions of truth about the ideas of interpretation and personal experiences and personal bias and therefore lends itself to different ways of developing values of what is true. But subject-inspired values can also mean how the teacher themselves understand the subject, their field of study, and the general goal of learning about this subject for students. That is like the broader aim of, this, of learning the subject, of the subject itself. So if we look at the reading on page 119, 119 it gives us a few examples. One is the example of literature. So it might be that an English teacher sees that the larger aim of English is to help students discover themselves, to understand the world and to understand each other. That is part of this general way of self-discovery and therefore is developing a particular value of understanding yourself, right? But another English teacher might see that understanding English and engaging in literature is not at all about self-discovery, but instead about promoting a general awareness of different topics about a general education, in which case the teacher <coughs> is promoting a value that is quite different from the idea of the focus on the self and discovering oneself, but instead focused on all of humanity and then understanding the history of ideas. This, idea, this then influences how the subject is taught. So teaching methods. How a teacher engages with a subject will implicitly teach particular values. So if we think about the types of questions the teacher asks, the way the teacher manages the class, the different activities the teachers ask students to be engaged in, these all reflect different types of values. Whether, whether the values are focused on the community, whether the values are focused on the individual, whether the questions or activities encourage critical thinking or creative thinking or very literal thinking or comprehension. These are all different types of values that are being taught in the pedagogy that the teacher chooses. You can think about our class and how the different ways in which I teach might pr promote particular values. We can also think about teaching methods as in how teachers actually deal with teaching particular values themselves. So in the reading on page 120, they, out they outline different ideas for how teachers choose to deal with teaching values like courage or justice or honor. And how a teacher chooses to avoid these topics or chooses to engage these topics is a form of indoctrinating as a con explicit way, but also an, an implicit way. So for example, by choosing to not teach a particular value because you think that it's gonna be too controversial, but because you think that the teacher shouldn't be teaching the values because you think 
that um, for any of the other reason, by choosing to avoid teaching values when they come up within the curriculum, you're suggesting to students a particular value notion, which is that this is a that val values are not part of the educational environment, that your that controversy is not okay, that everyone is entitled to their own position. And then teachers that choose to engage in teaching values explicitly, maybe they decide that they want to take on the idea of justice head on in their classroom, how they choose to do that is going to, to be a form of indoctrination, right? So if I choose to teach justice and I tell you that justice is a great thing and I promote activities that get you to the conclusion that justice is important and necessary and valuable, and then I'm explicitly indoctrinating you into the value of justice. But similarly, if the idea of justice comes up in the classroom, and if as a teacher I allow us to have an open discussion, and I don't tell you what I think, and I allow everyone to take sides, and I don't allow there to be a clearly right or wrong answer, it might be that I'm promoting a particular value, which is that justice is important to consider, but that perhaps there isn't one way for justice to be understood, or perhaps that justice as a value is controversial and still up to debate, that maybe it's not something that everyone should believe in. This is also something that I'm teaching by how I teach the value. And lastly, the article talks about how a, who the teacher is influences the values that they teach. That is, that the teacher's attitudes and behaviors in the classroom model particular values. So if a teacher is very closed off from their students, is very standoffish and very strict, it might be modeling a particular value about the teacher-student relationship, about what education is about, about what knowledge is. It may be teaching particular values about power, for example. And a teacher's just personality and their interests may also teach particular values. That is, if a teacher's personality is very outgoing and warm and understanding, then it might suggest that it is valuable to teach students to develop similar dispositions. And in developing those habits, they have been indoctrinated, as Kilpatrick has said, that by demonstrating being open and understanding, a teacher is pretty much endorsing that these are good characteristics because they themselves have them. A teacher may also bring in their own personal interests within the classroom, in which case, they might be promoting a particular value in doing so. So if I share that I'm very interested in volunteering and giving back to my community, and I talk about all the ways in which I donate my time to help others, I'm promoting a value of compassion or empathy or of service, and therefore I'm indoctrinating you as students. So let's look at what this might look like in practice. So the U.S. does not have a national values-based educational framework in which, you know, values are required to be taught at the educational level. And this is mainly because we like to think about education as being separated from church and state, where values are seen as the field of the home and the field of religion, and education is separate from those things, and therefore there's no place for values in public school education within the United States. So let's look at a different country and how they've justified the idea of bringing values into their education very explicitly. That is that they have a framework and a policy that says values should be taught in schools and this is how they should be taught. Australia is pretty recent in developing a national framework for values-based education. There is a long-standing history of value-based education in Asia and also in Europe. If you're interested in learning more, you can look there. So in Australia's national framework, they have to make an argument for why it's necessary for all of their public schools to teach values in the first place. So one claim that they make is that education is about building character, that it's not about just developing skills or general understanding of ideas, that like one of the reasons why kids go to school is because they need to become better people, that it's character. So again, we can think of this idea of values education as character-based education. And then they appeal to some of the research around teaching values to kids in their educational context. One is the claim that teaching values help strengthen students' self-esteem, that once they develop an idea of who they are, they feel more confident, 
and therefore that helps their learning. The other reason that they appeal to is that values-based education has proven to help promote a sense of personal responsibility and also social responsibility. So they're making the claim here that it's important for people to be personally responsible for their actions, but also that they need to be part of a community and be responsible for that community and helping that community out. And because value-based education helps do this, and then the, that's why they think it's important for it to be part of schools. So what does this look like in practice in Australia? So for Australia, values educational framework, and we'll look at what those values are, need to be part of all of the aspects of schooling. So each school must have, a policy, have policies that reflect the different values that Australia says is important for students to develop. And their mission statement for their school must also embody these values. But it's not enough for it to just be on paper. Australia is looking for the school culture and the general environment in the classroom to demonstrate these values in practice. That means that teachers and students, parents and principals and staff must follow these values and live them within the school themselves. They also think that because the idea of developing personal responsibility and social responsibility is a necessary part of values education, that schools must promote opportunities for students to engage in community issues, either issues in the school, issues in their local community, or issue, national issues. And that by providing that, they have an opportunity to engage their values and practice them. This also means that the values need to be incorporated in the teaching program. So here they mean both the teacher education program, so teachers need to learn about these values and learn how to teach these values, but that these values must also be part of the curriculum itself. So like, what are these values? So Australia appeals to nine different educational values, and you can think about whether these values are ones that were part of your schooling experience. One, care and compassion. So caring for yourself and for others. Two, you must value doing your best, which is, you know, trying hard, hard work. Three, fair go. Pursue and protect the common good where all people are treated fairly and for a just society, so essentially justice. Four, freedom, the idea that everyone has freedom and that we should make sure that everyone is free. Five, honesty and trustworthiness. Six, integrity. Seven, respect, eight, responsibility, and nine, understanding, tolerance, and inclusion. Do you think that all of these values are necessary for education? Is anything missing? Let's look at a few examples in the United States. So even though the United States does not have a national curriculum or requirement for teaching particular values, there are values that are hidden within each public school's mission and vision statement. So let's look at Amherst, Massachusetts. Quote, the mission of our school is to provide all students with a high quality education that enables them to be contributing members of a multi-ethnic, multicultural, pluralistic society. We seek to create an environment that achieves equity for all students and ensures that each student is a successful learner, is fully respected, and learns to respect others. So we can ask ourselves what values are going to be endorsed in the Amherst, Massachusetts public school system, either through school policies, through school culture, through teacher modeling, teaching strategies, or the curriculum itself. When we look at the last sentence, we can definitely see that there's a value of respect that is being permeated throughout the educational system in Amherst. We can also see that equity might mean that they are gonna talk talk about equality. In the first sentence, they're talking about multiculturalism. So we can assume that they might be teaching values of being part of a community, about respecting differences, and about cultural and multicultural understanding. Let's look at Cleveland, Ohio. Quote, we prepare all students for college and life by providing a challenging curriculum that connects students' lives and their futures in a safe, supportive, and nurturing environment. So here we might need to dig a little bit deeper about to see what those hidden values are that might be 
inadvertently being indoctrinated into the, into the students of the school district. So we can think of the college and college and challenging curriculum as valuing future success or competitiveness. We can think of the idea that connects to students' lives in their future as valuing practicality or personal identity and experiences. And we can think of safe, supportive, and nurturing environment as valuing community, respect, safety, compassion, and understanding. You're going to be asked to examine the Newark, New Jersey school mission statement for its hidden values as part of the lecture quiz. So let me end today's lecture by reflecting on some of the questions that could be brought up as we think through the different ideas of indoctrinating through education and the different models of value-based education. One is, what values, if any, should we be teaching in schools? Do you think that there are set values that are important for all students to learn and that should be done through the indoctrinating model that Kilpatrick is against or through the way that Kilpatrick models through the idea of indoctrinating with the intent of having them choose democratically what to believe? What do you think is the best way to teach values if we have to do so? So what of the three models did you think that the most appropriate? And then thinking about how all of this relates to your personal experiences in school. How were you taught different values? What were these different values? And did you think it was appropriate for the teacher to be teaching these values in the way that they taught those values?